Hey guys, it's Dr. Tom with EBM Fitness Solutions and in this video we're going to look at kind of a squat progression but more so from the vantage point of somebody who is new to squatting, uh, has some knee pain or back issues when squatting and how they can learn how to do it in a pain-free way. This does also apply to people that have been squatting for a while and maybe need to tweak their mechanics or they're struggling with some uh, component of it. Sometimes coming back to the basics is not a bad idea. So a couple of things to think about when you're learning how to squat, um, with or without pain, it's always good to start squatting from a box and make it fairly high in the beginning. This is about you know 22 inches off the ground and one of the things you can look for when you're sitting is the relationship between the hip and the knee. Okay, If your hip is a little bit higher than the knee, then getting up is going to be a little bit easier, right? If you ever sat down on a low surface that had your knee above your hip, getting off of that surface is very challenging. It's kind of awkward too. So set yourself up for success, get a high box, set up, and then work from there. It usually is best to start from the bottom and work up, meaning start from a seated position and work up from there. Uh, when it comes to sort of uh, stance or, or foot width, go with what's comfortable, okay? And this is for a couple different reasons, but everybody's different. Everybody's anatomy is a little bit different. The, the main thing is the hip, okay? When, when your thigh bone comes up, the top of it, it angles in to meet up with the socket of the hip. And that angle is different for everybody or for a lot of people. So it can be more of a 90 degree angle, maybe a little more of like a 135, 145 degree angle. And then the position of the socket could be slightly more to the front, slightly more to the side. It could have a slight tip to it as well. So those differences are going to basically dictate how you move. And there's nothing you can do about it, can't change it. So it's one of the reasons why some people will never squat deep, uh, known as ass to grass, if you will. You'll never do that, at least not without involving your spine and other things. You might be able to get down there, but to do it with, with uh, good proper mechanics and good spinal position, probably not gonna happen. And that's okay. Forcing that person to squat deep is going to cause them problems at some point. So find a stance, because the stance has everything to do with your hips as well. You can turn the toes out slightly. You can have them pointed up in. Just avoid extremes. Don't go too narrow. Don't go too wide. Don't turn the feet out too far. Find what's comfortable for you and use that. Don't worry about what anybody else tells you to do. If you feel comfortable in a certain position, we can work on your mechanics within that. But if somebody tells you you have to put your feet here, you have to do this, it's incorrect. Because everybody's different and they don't know what your anatomy looks like. So if you find something that works, stick with that. The first part of the box squat progression is going to be to sit and stand one rep at a time and actually sitting and taking a break in between each rep. This is going to ensure that there's no knee pain, there's no back pain, and that you can really manage fatigue and focus on your technique to make, make each rep count. So this strategy will also be great for sitting and standing throughout the day. So here's what typically happens. When we sit, we tend to scoot back, whether it's a chair, the couch, or whatever. So we tend to sit like this. Now, it's not a bad thing, I'm not suggesting you shouldn't do that, but when you go to get up, you don't want to try to get up from this position. Too much of your upper body, pretty much all of your upper body, is behind your knees. So you're not in a position to stand up. If you don't throw your weight forward or do something else, you actually can't stand up from this position. It doesn't matter how big and strong you are, it's a physics issue, it's not a strength issue. So you really can't, you push, you're going to go that way, you're going to fall off the back of something. So when you do your squat progression, and when you go to sit and stand, the first thing you want to do is scoot your butt to the edge of whatever you're sitting on. Now this is, there's a couple reasons why I want to do this. From here, I also can't control and rotate my hips and do any of my uh, pelvic tilting or, or change the curve of my back because this is blocking my ability to do that. If I scoot my butt forward, get to the edge, I can position my feet, I have more control over what I do with my hips and my low back, it allows me to get to a better position. I can now lean forward, which lets my glutes get involved. So instead of being back here more at 90 degrees, I can get here and get into a better position to stand up from here. If you're new to squats, you have any kind of knee or back pain, use your legs for support. Or if, what, if you're sitting on a chair that has arms, use them. But the legs work great because they're going to be with you no matter where you go. So if you lean forward here, push. So my abs are tight push off the legs, and up you go, okay? Now, 
that's the easy part. Getting up is usually the easy part. Getting back to the surface, that's where things get tricky. So what you want to do is not push your knees forward and not just fall back. That's what a lot of people do is their torso gets too vertical too quick and they fall backwards. It's the same idea as why we can't stand up from here. If you start to sit this way, you will fall backwards every single time. It's not a strength issue, it's a physics issue. So what you want to do is think about pushing your hips back first. So I'm going to lead with my hips, then I bend my knees. So the hips go back, then the knees bend, I keep my hips back, and then I sit and rest. And then I reset and do another rep. If you're new to this, keep the reps brief. Three, four, five reps, and then stop. The goal is to reinforce good mechanics, but to have a pain-free range of motion. The second progression is taking what we did in the first one and moving it to more what we call a tap and go. So this time, when you come down, instead of sitting between each rep, you will basically just tap your butt to the box and then go right back up. So it forces you to stay in a good position throughout. If you start to get vertical, where you fall backwards a little bit, then you're not going to be able to maintain this one. You're going to notice it right away at that juncture where you try to go from the bottom back up. So the setup is always the same. Get to the edge, set your back position, lean in, and still use the hands and the legs if you need to. You're going to push yourself up. On the way back down, heels and hips. Heels into the ground, push your butt back. But this time, as soon as I feel the step, I come right back up. I don't sit. It's a tap and go. So, come down, come down, come down, touch, right back up. So it forces you to maintain that slight forward lean, that hip hinge. Right, so I get this position, if I start to straighten up, you'll feel this, you'll fall backwards. That lets you know that you're moving the trunk, you're moving your body to a vertical position too quickly. You want to maintain that sort of slightly forward position. And this is true when you sit down as well. Get your butt down, then straighten up. Don't fall backwards this way. Get your butt down and then scoot yourself back and get into your uh, seated position, whatever you're going to do. But don't straighten the body until your butt is in contact with the couch, the chair, the bed, whatever that thing is, wait, then bring it back. The next progression would be to add some weight to our tap and go movement. In this demonstration, I'll use a dumbbell, but this idea would be applied to a barbell, uh, any kind of a straight bar, or uh, some kind of a yoke bar, doesn't matter, but the technique would be the same whether I'm using a dumbbell or, or a bar. Um, and it's okay too as you're learning these things to do a box squat with a bar to set up and work on coming down to the box to help reinforce your technique uh, and make sure you're learning the movement properly as you start to load it. Because what should happen ideally as you progress through from the first one where you sat between each rep to the tap and go to the tap and go with weight, if we were to take a snapshot or take a video of your technique, it should look the same no matter how you're doing it. Uh, intensity or adding weight or making something harder should not change your technique. If it does, you have to back up or lighten the weight or change something else. Adding intensity or something to a movement doesn't have your technique break down is counterproductive. So don't let that happen. It might mean fewer reps. Maybe you instead of doing uh, 12 tap and goes body weight, maybe you get six tap and goes with 10 or 15 pounds. And in the beginning, that's okay. It's about pain-free movement, improving mechanics, and really learning how to do it right, not just doing stuff for the sake of doing stuff. So, I'm going to take my weight, and I'm going to do more of what's called a goblet squat. So I'm going to cradle this, like this, and I'm going to hold it against my chest. Okay? Everything I did with the tap and go is still in place. I get my feet set. Now, the only difference here is I cannot use my hands on my legs, clearly, because I've got my friend here. So, I'm going to lean into it, up. Heels and hips, push back, come down, touch, and then back up again. Do not let this drift away from your body. Keep it right against your chest, all the way through the movement. And again, this same idea would apply if I was using a barbell or any kind of a trap, uh, not a trap bar, the yoke bar, anything like that. Come down, use the box, touch the box, come right back up. So make sure as you add weight to the movement that the weight does not jeopardize your technique. This will not help you in the long run. Make sure that as the weight increases, the movement is more challenging, but you're still able to preserve your technique. 
doing fewer reps when you add weight makes sense initially. If you were doing 12 at a certain weight and you increase the weight, at least for the first time, expect to do fewer reps. Okay? As long as it lets you preserve your technique, that's the most important thing. Focus on technique and everything else comes after that. Never let sets, reps, intensity, or those things jump ahead of your focus on technique.